When you kill a man, you never forget that moment. You can never forget it, never get it out of your head. It haunts you. I can still smell the burned flesh and the unearthed ground of the trail in the Mikey Valley. Our platoon had been assigned to ambush. Most of the time, nothing happened. You just take your shift while the other man sleeps, not doing much. Just screwing around, really. But that night, that night was different. I was on watch. I remember seeing a young man come out of the fog. He wore black clothing, sandals, gray ammunition belt. Shoulders were slightly stooped, head cocked to the side. He seemed at ease. Before I knew it, I had already pulled the pin on the grenade. The grenade was to make him go away, just evaporate. The brush was thick, so I had to lob it high, not aiming. And I remember the grenade seeming to freeze above my head for an instant. The grenade bounced once and rolled down the trail. The grenade made a popping sound, a small white puff, and the young man seemed to jerk backwards as if pulled by invisible wires. He lay at the center of the trail. One eye shut, the other a huge star-shaped hole. Kia told me it was a good kill, that I was a soldier and this was war. The young man had been born maybe in 46. He wasn't a communist. He was a citizen soldier. From the looks of him, he liked books. The man I killed would have been determined to continue his education in mathematics. The body lay almost entirely in the shade, gnats in the mouth, his jaw was in his throat, one eye shut, the other a star-shaped hole. The young man seemed to be staring at something distant, a faraway object. I could hear Kyo in the far distance, almost a faint whisper. Come on man, talk! Talk man. Talk.